You understand? <laughs> you know, you, you, you're not considering that, that, you know. Huh? But he said, come back to, you got to fast and pray. Now, I ain't saying you, can, you don't have to fast. You got to fast and pray. But look what he said. Come together again. Don't neglect that part of your marriage. Come together again. That what? Uh-oh. That Satan. Y'all better read that. That what? You see, if you, if you neglect, if you neglect any part of your marriage, you're opening the door for Satan to tempt one partner or the other. It's going to be tempted. Now, I'm not giving nobody no excuse. You know, you don't have no excuse. But, but, but a person can be provoked. A person can be, uh, one partner or the other can become more vulnerable. If you're being neglected, you understand, and you don't want your, your partner to be tempted unnecessarily, it's enough temptation anyhow. Come on. But come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency, which means lack of self-control. You understand what I'm saying? And and it, it has happened in so many marriages because the neglect that was involved and one partner or the other took their, now ain't no excuse now, took their spiritual guard down and lost control. And all it takes is a moment of indiscretion. Come on, somebody. That's why the Bible said leave no space for the devil. All right, so do benevolence. Y'all have to say do benevolence is the first principle of good stewardship in my marriage. I've got to be considerate. I must be sensitive to the needs of my spouse. Her, 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 her or his emotional needs, his physical, sexual needs. Come on, somebody. I must be attentive. All right? Uh, now, the second principle is understanding roles, roles in marriage. Now that's really important to understand your role in the marriage. And we're living in a day now where folk, amen, couples are getting married and don't have the first clue about what their responsibility is in that marriage. There is a role that the husband plays in the marriage. There is a role that the wife primarily plays in the marriage. So you got to understand your role in marriage, and, and, and when I do marriage counseling, that's one of the things I do. I talk about the roles in marriage. So you got to understand the roles. All right, so let's look at uh, Ephesians, the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter of Ephesians, <coughs> excuse me, and verse 22. And then we're going to look at, well, we're going to look at verse 22 and verse 23. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3, and 1 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 4 and verse 12. Ephesians 5 and 22 says, uh, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is what? He is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So the role of the husband is to be the head of the family and be the head of the wife. Now that word means that he is the uh, authority, you know, all right? Now, what does that mean? Head means that the husband, and it is, it's important to understand your roles, you know. Now, I, I want you to know that marriage is a partnership, but each partner has a role that God has defined. It's just like on the team, you know, on the team. You know, we all on that team, but, but the coach has a role to play. And, and if the members of the team don't understand the roles, you know, uh, just like that sinner, he has a role to play. 
uh, the point guard, you know, he the fella that bring the ball down the court. You have to understand your role because if you don't understand the role that you play on the team, come on here, you ain't going to win the game. You can have talent and ability, but if everybody don't understand their roles, come on here, then you, 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 you're not going to win. You're just not going to win. And so you, uh, married couples need to understand that the husband is the head or he is the authority in the family. What does that mean? That means he is the primary decision maker. Did, did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. He is the primary decision. What does that mean? That means that in marriage, you understand, there's going to be times where you don't necessarily agree, and, but somebody has to make the decision. All right? The husband is the authority or the primary decision maker in the family. All right? Uh, uh, now, it says in 1 Corinthians 11, 11 and 3, uh, read that for me. Uh, read that for me, Elder Downs. Will you read that for me? Mm -hmm. Now the head of every man is Christ, and look, the head of the woman is the man. All right, he is the primary authority in the family. He is the primary decision maker. To be the head means that uh, that you are the the example. Come on, not only are you the primary decision maker, and it stands the reason since the, you're the authority in the family, then you also has have to be an example of moral and spiritual integrity. If you want to be a good steward of your headship, then you need to be a, an example, leader. That's what leader means, doesn't it? Amen. An example of moral and spiritual integrity. Can you say amen? All right. That means that you ought to uh, lead your family in prayer. Lead them in the study of the word of God and in public worship. See? Amen. So to be the head is the primary decision maker and the example of moral and spiritual integrity. Uh, integrity. That's what God has called us to be, men, to be heads of our families. All right? Uh, First Timothy, First Timothy, the third chapter, verse four and five, the husband is to rule his house. How, how did he say? Uh, uh, Elder Downs, read that for me. First Timothy, the third chapter, verse four and five. Mm -hmm. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Skip down to verse, uh, I believe that is verse 8 of the same chapter. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Mm -hmm. All right. Come on. Come on. Mm hmm Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right, read on. All right. Okay. I think I'm looking for that scripture that said the deacon uh, 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 has to be uh, 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 one that rule. Did, do you all see that? At verse 12, look at verse 12, what it said. Husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. All right, very good, very good, very good. All right, now, so the husband is the head. He is the primary decision maker. He is the uh, uh, example, or to set the example of moral and spiritual integrity. He must rule his home well. All right. So uh, the second principle is understanding your roles. Now, the wife have to understand her role in the marriage. Amen. And so, again, we go to Ephesians. 
we go to Ephesians, uh, the, the uh, fifth chapter, and verse 22. What did it say? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Now, what does that mean? Well, the wife is subordinate to her husband in the marriage. Now, that don't mean the husband is smarter than you. Come on now. That don't mean he necessarily have to be more spiritual than you. It means that you are under his authority.